of Czechoslovakia. I'll show you a part of the map that this, this movement spread through. It's in southeast Germany. This is the area. Revival swept this land. People began to come out of religion and come into relationship. And the uh, Protestant Reformation actually began there before even Martin Luther was on the scene. So the very first Protestants were here. And now it became hundreds of thousands of these Protestants that were living. They called themselves the Bohemian Brethren. Another name for their church was the Unity of the Brethren. They focused massively on unity, loving one another. They got that from the model of the early church. They were a community. They loved each other. Well, persecution struck, and by the year 1600, hundreds of thousands of those people, our brothers and sisters in Christ, that were serving God very similar to the way that you do, were all martyred. Many of them were driven from their homes. Uh, persecution struck in a massive way as there was a conflict of religion. Roman Catholic and the Protestants People begin to war. Can you imagine? Look, we have church splits, but we don't have people fighting like that. And they were, uh, it was little war. And they drove people from their homes. And about 100 years went by, and this group of people, the Moravians, it had been 250 years since the whole thing started, and they were pretty much unheard of at this time because they had been persecuted. Hundreds of thousands of them lost their lives. One of the greatest persecutions in all of human history uh, of the church. Well, 300 of these Moravians stuck together, and they were refugees. They traveled the land, they set up tents, they just lived off the land, and they stopped learning how to read, how to write, they were uneducated, and they came across a man by the name of Ludwig von Zinzenberg. That's a mouthful, huh? Keeping that in mind for my next son, if I have one. No, not really. Ludwig von Zinzendorf, sorry. Messed up a little bit. He is a, a a German wealthy man. He was a landowner. And these 300 people, you got to put a picture up of uh, Brother Ludwig. There's Count Ludwig von Zinzendorf. And God was really wealthy. They came knocking at his door and they said, we need a place to stay. Can you host us on your property? He owned uh, thousands and thousands of acres of land. So he allowed these 300 refugees who were called the Moravians to set up on his property. And they began to build a little town. Well, other people began to come to that town, Lutherans, Calvinists, uh, even some Catholics began to come, and they began to settle there with these Moravians. Well, strife began to break out. Some people said, I believe in predestination, I believe in this, I believe in that, and strife began to break out. And finally, at the end of the day, they said, Count Ludwig von Zinzendorf is the Antichrist himself. These people got all off, got, got all off. Well... Ludwig was at the capital, and he made his way back, and he said, I'm going to devote my life to bringing peace to this little city that I've allowed to form on my land. So he got there, and he called all of them together. And now this was the year 1727. In May of 1727, he called all of these Moravians, all of these people that had come to live in the town together, and he said, break open the Bible. And he began to read from the scriptures to this group of people on unity, on love, on what it meant to truly be a Christian. Conviction began to spread in this small group of Moravians. And he said, I want you to all go home, and I want you to write down the things that you do agree on. Instead of focusing on what you don't agree on, focus on what you do agree on. And I think that's a huge thing for believers. You know, we can always nitpick and find little things that we can divide over, but when we pursue unity, we pursue what do we agree on. So it's a funny thought to think, you study history, in, in 1052, there was a, an event called the Great Schism, where the Eastern Orthodox Church and the, and the Roman Catholic Church split. And you know why they split? Because one of them liked to take communion that had leaven in the bread, and the other one wanted to take communion that didn't have leaven in the bread, so they said, let's tear the whole thing apart. I mean, you know, there's going to be little differences, but unity is when we put aside our differences, focus on our our agreements. And so he, Zinzendorf sent them all home. He said, go home and write down the things you agree on. Well, they came back together and they found that they agreed on a whole lot of stuff. And so groups of them began to get together and pray. Now, this is the month of May. And between the month of May and the month of July, a, a, a spirit of unity began to come over this group of people. They began to read the Bible together. They began to pray together in groups of three to five. They would 
gather together in each other's homes and they would pray. Something happened in the month of July. The preacher got up to preach and the whole city only had one pastor because if when you have a town of 300, you only need one pastor. The man got up to speak and as he began to preach, history tells us that the power of God fell on this man that was preaching. And he fell to the floor. And this was unheard of for these people. They, they didn't know what was going on. This man fell to the floor and all of a sudden the spirit of conviction fell in the room and people began to weep. People began to pray. People began to cry out to God. And that went on for 12 hours. From noon to midnight, a move of God. Can you imagine what would happen right now if, if I fell out and then all of a sudden a conviction broke up? Man, you would be like, what's going on in this room? Some of you would be like, get me out of here. I'm like, But this began to spark something. Some of them got together and they said, hey, let's begin to pray every day. They started a 5 a.m. prayer service. And then they started a 7.30 a.m. prayer service. And then they started a 9 p.m. prayer service. And they prayed at 5 o'clock, 7.30, 9 p.m. every day. And they didn't have enough room in these houses. They were Because the houses were packed with people just wanting to pray three times a day. They got ravenously hungry for the word of God. And this little city began to experience a move of God. Well, one month later in August, Count Zinzendorf was reading a journal from a hundred years later. When the great persecution happened, there was hundreds of thousands of Moravians. And the pastor that was over all of those hundreds of thousands of people was named John Amos Comenius. And John Amos Comenius, when the persecution went on, he prophesied that in a hundred years, now look, there's something about a hundred years, I don't know. He prophesied in a hundred years that a revival would spring up from a seed that was hidden in the ground. And as he began to read that journal, he realized that it was to the day a hundred years before. August the 13th, 1627, to the very day, it was August the 13th, 1727, he called them all together and he read that, that the Moravians, there would be a hidden seed in the ground and that revival would spring up from that hidden seed. Well, they all began to cry out to God. This was the day. This was the moment. And history records that they experienced something very similar to what happened in Acts chapter 2 with Pentecost.